Against Dallas, the run game was MIA. Against the Jaguars, they had a real legitimate, not elite, but a real legitimate running game without Nick Chubb. Which performance, week one or week two, do you think mm-hmm. is more indicative of what the Browns can expect from their rushing attack until we get Nick Chubb back in the fold? I, I think it's what we saw yesterday. Um, I, I thought Jerome Ford last year, when you look back at it, I said this before the season, was adequate. It just looked worse because, what, you're not buying it? You don't like he had that. four good runs. All right, wait a four. second. <laughs> First of all, I'm saying last year I thought he was adequate, and he looked worse because we were comparing him to Nick Chubb, and everybody else looked shitty compared to Nick well, Chubb. Well, it's, the Jed, Wills, Wills, it's the Jed Wills, Joe Thomas argument. Exactly. Where I say he's right, average, right, and you're you right. killed And me. I came around on that. Um, and, and the thing is, I think the, part of the reason they were more effective uh, yesterday is because of, of the, the – the balance is one, but also the balance between two backs. Like Deontay Foreman is more of a Nick Chubb type of back. Mm-hmm. Again, nowhere close to his good style, but he's but style, style, stylish. Yeah, he's similar. Yes, and I thought he had some good hard runs through the middle and mm-hmm. kind of softened up the defense. And that's mm-hmm. when Jerome Ford can be more effective mm-hmm. when the defense is, uh, you know, broken down a little bit. You said he only had four good runs, but he only carried the ball like eight times. He had more than eight carries last no, year. No, he was no, 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 last, no, no, no. Year last year. He had four good runs. Oh, last year. Yeah. that's not fair. Four good runs the whole year. I mean, four. come on. Four. Nah, that's not fair. But but uh, um, I, I, I thought he had some. <laughs> I, that play, obviously, on that fourth down play was a great run. Bless you. Bless you. But I, I thought it was a good combo of the two. I think when you look at Foreman's yards per carry, it's misleading because it's not very high because he had a couple of, of losses when he got hit in the backfield. I thought overall he played. I thought they both did a nice job. Here's what they did. Shout out to Stefanski for this one. They utilized the strengths of each running back. They realized, listen, uh, Jerome Ford is tipping. Yeah, why would we keep running him on inside zone plays? Right, that does not work. Plays? That, that don't work. That's not what his forte is. Hey, how's about we create some different things from him outside? The pin and pull plays. Um, you know, where you're getting out the center out and, and moving around, doing some things where you, you where you're getting the trick play for him out there in the open where he's more explosive and has that that knack for, you know, breaking long runs. And you, you take a look at it more of a of a, 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 a marriage to the thought of, listen, man, I'm not going to always get five, seven yards, but like you said, 4.3 a carry. Yeah. You just need to keep them honest. They had some some definitely some runs. Uh, Deontay Foreman was really slamming it there and making sure that the defense had to, had to be a, a, a defense that had to worry about the run game as well. And I also thought he did this too. This, I don't know what the Ken Dorsey playbook is, but I thought Kevin Stefanski went back and said, listen, we got to we got to add some stuff in here that our personnel runs good. You know, we got to give our offensive line an opportunity to come off the ball. And, and I thought it was much more uh, some runs under center. Yeah. You saw you saw some straightforward type stuff up front. And I think he came back and said, look, I know we want to run the football. And I think we all got to come to the conclusion with this. Like, hey, <laughs> I know they've been trying to tell us for years that this is what it is. And it's this, 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 this. Fast-paced Miami Dolphins throw the ball, and we about to run this jet sweep motion and all that RPO. Uh, by the way, the league is getting rid of all that motion because I don't know what what a motion penalty is anymore. All that orbit stuff, they call it every play now, so it is around the league. So who knows if they're going to even run? Well, you that. can't be running towards the line of scrimmage. But right. some of these plays, I don't even think they was running towards the line of scrimmage. I thought it was just just the orbit motion penalties were weird yesterday. Those were not called. The exact same thing was yes. not called last yeah. year. They got to be consistent with that it. Yet. That's the problem. Yeah. I don't get it, but. But, but it's, it's one of the things that they're focusing on yeah. this year. Yeah. By the way, I, I think uh, I think to your point, like getting Jerome Ford outside in space is big for him. I think even I, I think we could, should see some plays where Deontay Foreman's in the backfield, especially with David Njoku out right now, and they really have no presence at tight end. Like line up Jerome Ford in the slot. Yeah. Let him. He, he did a couple times. Yesterday. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'd like to see more of that. I think he could be effective that yeah, way. I agree with that. He's very good at catching right. passes. So I, let's, I, let's I, use I, him. They're utilizing him right the way yeah. he, that he should be. I think it was better. I do think that this is more indicative of the running game that they can have without Nick Chubb because, to everybody's point, they figured out round peg, round hole, Jerome Ford outside, mm-hmm. yeah. square peg, square hole, running Foreman, Foreman on the inside. Yeah. 
uh, the only criticism I would have of the run game is I wanted to see more of Ford. In, in the course of a game, I know you make a game plan every week and then you decide that you're going to stick to that game plan. But also, I thought for adjustments on both sides of the ball yesterday, we were we lost both both sides. At halftime, and they showed the numbers at, at one point yeah. in the third quarter, they were reversed. Yeah. We had all the offense in the first half. They had none. In the second half, it was reversed. Right. So I, I, I have to see our coaching staff start winning the adjustment battles because when are games won? Yep. In the second half. We were, so we were terrible on adjustments. One of the adjustments that I would have made, I felt like the tendency is to go too pass heavy when you don't have to. There was a stretch where we were getting conservative, mm-hmm. but we weren't getting conservative running the ball. We were getting conservative with these stupid two-yard passes. Like, mm. why not use Ford more? Can you give me his numbers again? I think he averaged nine yards a carry. Yeah, I mean, he, he, it's a little, a little skewed because of the one thirty-five. But it's always sweep, that way, though. But, but, but it's still, always Mike, that way, Mike. Think about that. If you take out that thirty-five yard carry on that play, he still had twenty-nine yards on six carries. That's almost five yards a yes. carry. Yeah. I mean, he was yeah. clearly working. Yeah. So he played, he played well. One of he the things well. that I want to see is if during the course of a game, something that you didn't intend on leaning heavily upon is working then you go to it more often. It's just like a pitcher sure, when, he, yeah. when he's throwing. His fastball might be his best pitch, but on one given day, his curveball is out of this world. Well, the catcher starts calling That's more right. curveballs. I, yeah, sure. I think what happened with that is there was a play in pass protection where he was supposed to block somebody, and uh, he was supposed to block a linebacker, and it was... <laughs> didn't go well. It, it didn't go well. It was like uh, uh, instant pressure. And sometimes you got to take it into consideration because... Those guys have to block too. So it's like, yes, I would love to have you in the game, but if if we can't count on you in pass protection, well, don't have him in there in pass protection. D- during in pass protection time. But then it's sometimes it, you tip your hand a little bit because now maybe you do, but you keep your quarterback alive. Yes, you're like, oh well, if like if, you can't get Zeke Elliott in ever. Yeah, you know, he and, got, and he did. I know the player talking he, about. And, and so Stefanski is like, ooh. Maybe we want to keep. But Maybe we want to run with you and not block with you. And then, then the defense knows. Oh, listen, when Jerome Ford is not in the game, you know what what to expect now. But I, I'll give. I, listen, I'll give. I'll give Kevin Stefanski credit. There was much more emphasis on running the ball. I think it was intentional how they used the two running backs, and that is more of the type of offense that I expect to see throughout the season. Um, and if you do that. You get a better offensive line um, pr- protection in terms of your play action, run action too, because you p- t- people have to respect it. You the- asked a rhetorical question. I want to ask it specifically to Jason as an actual question. You said I, we don't know what what the playbook looks like uh, because he's not the offensive coordinator. Right? Do we know yet what his input is on the offense? What is? I mean, we know what he did in Buffalo. Oh, Ken. Yeah. yeah. Like, what have you figured out yet? Sure the collaboration and how it comes together between Ken Dorsey and Kevin Stefanski. No, I think, I, I mean, this is still very much Kevin's offense. Like, it feels like some of the run schemes look different to me. You mm-hmm. could probably speak that better yeah. than me. Some of the run schemes yeah. look different to me. Is that because Chubb isn't there or maybe I don't know. Ken Dorsey? I, I, you know, Callahan's the run coordinator, so there's a lot of different things that they're doing up front. Um, they were moving a lot laterally the first game, but this game you you can see them doing some stuff that they did, depending and pulling, and getting guys Motion outside, too. And, and and blocking and moving like the solid zone stuff to the next level. But the uh, the scheme run wise has been too different the last two days or two games. I don't know if you said what is what is Ken Dorsey's philosophy. I I, I don't really know. I don't know that anyone knows. I mean, it sounds silly to say. But uh, like, I, because this still very much Pelt looks like it. This still, we're only two weeks in. Yeah. This very much looks like a Kevin Stefanski offense to me still. It's like I was expecting a lot more shotgun and RPO than what we've gotten. We've gotten some in each week, but it's still Deshaun under center. It's still a lot of play action. It's still a lot of staples that Kevin believes in. Mike has a stat on that. That I thought would be go- – I'd be curious to know the numbers because I haven't looked them up, but my eyes tell me – a same. lot of it is, is, is very similar. I've been saying the same thing, too. It looks, it, you know, for all the talk of change, 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 just like last year. It, there's some. It like looks I see pretty some. similar. There's some RPOs. A little wrinkle here, there. <clears throat> what are Go the ahead, numbers, Mike? Mike? So this is just from the first drive yesterday. Back to whose offense is it 
They both yeah. have influence in it, but you can still see Stefanski heavy, heavy influence. Jason, you said it before week one. You said just because of the lack of receivers, you still think we're going to see some heavy sets that yeah. keep saying spread, spread, spread. Yep. On their 16-play, 89-yard touchdown drive to open the game, the Browns had six or more offensive linemen on the field for 49%. Or for 40, what's seven of 16? 46%. It's below 50%. Yeah. About half. 45%, About half. yeah. They used six offensive linemen or more on seven snaps in week one. Wow, that's interesting. So it, And you know what? I, I didn't look at that, but I, to me, it, I did say a number of times, Wow, we're going heavy now, a lot. I will say real quick, they use Nick Harris as a fullback. So that may be a little <laughs> cheat code because Harris, on that first play of the game, he was in as the fullback in motion. Yeah, that is a bit of a that's still lineman. Lineman. That's but still, line. He's a lineman. But still he's going a lineman. very heavy, that's, and it's something we didn't see week one. That's kind of the point I was making was I thought we would get – I didn't think it would be week two, but we'd get to the point of right back to to where we've come from with extra linemen and, it and, and heavy sets. I mean, It, it always works. works when he does it. It's, it's not the Chiefs. It's not – Sexy and flashy, bro. But he always give me so, give me successful. I don't care what it looks like. I, success. Is I, what I, I want. tell people all the time. Sometimes you want to be something, but you just who you are. <laughs> he go. He went to Kim and was like, "All right, Kim, we'll try to run this." And then he saw the film and he said, "Now you see why I be running this, <laughs> right?" Now, well, now okay, you, so it worked. But why? You know, stay with it. Not, not, Use it the rest of the game. Not, now you see why? Because now it's like, hey, these are. This is why I do this. So. And guess what happened? That first drive, did Deshaun Watson look better the first drive of this game or last right. game? Well, that's easy. Well, obviously this game. Yeah. Because so they have to start asking why. There are security blankets built into this. There's there's different things you can do. The protection looks better. When you try, look, I, I say it all the time. When you want to get in five wide or four wide and you basically take the threat of runaway out of center or any play action, you know how good you got to be throwing the ball? You got to be cold. You got to be top the, And the opposition knows what you, you're going to do. You know how good you got to be. To, you know I'm passing, but I'm still going to pass on you. You know, one of the little things that probably got overlooked, but I wanted to bring it up to get your thoughts on it. I thought Jameis Winston, it seems like such a simple play, the sneak. The second time he ran it, mm -hmm. I thought the patience he mm -hmm. showed. Yep. He got the ball, took a step to his left, waited for the initial yeah. contact, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. and then picked his spot. Yeah. Yep. And I think... That's that's the way the sneak that, should be run. That's the way yeah. the sneak it should be run. He had that's the it was brilliant. The patience on it because what they did, and then you could tell they've been coaching it up. They let everybody declare right, and even when they ran the play off of it when the end around to to Jerome Ford, it was like, oh yeah, you guys are gonna jam up in the middle. Okay, well we're gonna wait you out, and then we're gonna react to it. And the patience on the, the sneak was brilliant. The way he ran it. I, I don't know. Stefanski must be up at night just looking. He's like, yes, it's fourth and one. I get to try my plays out. I got two yeah. ready for him oh, in the yeah. holster. You ain't never going to guess what I got Listen, for that's, you. That's what Andy <laughs> – I, I, watch, I watch the Chiefs so I can see what Andy Reid has cooked up next. Yeah. And Stefanski is on the mental level. He's right there. I mean, he's he, he needs Jay, more gonna, of them. You're going to lose your mind when he calls a Jameis Winston play action I was, fourth and inches. Yes. No, well, you're going to lose your absolute Not if it works. Clip what he just said. <laughs> yeah. He just works. compared him to Andy Reid. Clip that and no, play it back no, for him. What I said was <laughs> his fourth and one package <laughs> is pretty right. damn close. Clip it. <laughs> I like it. Next, I do. I like the right. creativity. Now. I was when screaming. When it doesn't when work, he, yep. I was screaming because it's like you're coaching Madden. There are real consequences to not picking this up. I was. You don't turn the game off and go outside. I couldn't breathe. Like there's sometimes hit I the reset button. I Try it again. I can't. Right, Stefanski, we do. I, I, mean, I can't breathe on that one, bro. What are you? I know. Doing? But pulled so far officially in my head on that because yeah. I, I'm hearing him going. Oh, I can hear the you know punt punt the crowd punt the ball the crowd, points crowd take the, the points point, crowd yeah. and I'm screaming. And as soon as he got outside, yeah. I go, that's the best call I've ever seen. Yeah. That's beautiful. Well, do you remember he did it with Jacoby Brissett in Watson's second game back? Yeah. Oh, Cincinnati. Oh, and, Cincinnati. And then last year, they had Harrison Bryant. And then they had the Harrison Bryant toss to Kareem, uh, Kareem Hunt, who scored on the touchdown. So yes. He does a really good job building on those plays. I like that. And when they work, it is magical. And when they don't, they are all-time contestants. Like the beauty of calling that in week two is the next three opponents now – on fourth and one, have to wait just a sure. second. They can't crash yeah. middle. He's all in on the, I think you said aggressive, aggressive. He is aggressive, aggressive. That's who he is. Yes. And, you know, yes. I mean, Cincinnati is that way. Yeah. Sandy, or at the, the Chargers were that way. 
got their coach bounced, that yeah. amongst other things. Yeah. I but, mean, the Cincinnati call, my head left my shoulders yeah, me too. in the press box. Me too. But I've come, like, this is who he is. Yeah, it's, and he, he is it. all gas, no break, and he's going to <laughs> okay. be aggressive, aggressive <laughs> one yeah. on fourth and on one, Stefanski, fourth and two. And then we'll move on. His trick play package when it comes to non-fourth and inches drives me nuts. That reverse to Jerry Judy yesterday, G, have they ever had a trick play that's actually worked properly? Um, no, all, all, somebody oh, always. We wouldn't. You gonna remember that offhand? Come so, on. It, it, it seems like more often than not, though. To to, to that, the, hey, it the just non like fourth it. and short, like the like right. the middle of the field, fifty yard line play. Like the Amari Cooper through the pass. Yeah. Cooper yeah. interception. Deshaun Every throwing it backwards. They didn't, they didn't Putting lose. your backup Elijah quarterback Moore in to take a shot at the end zone. I don't have a problem with it. They didn't lose yards on that play. I think they just. Who Jerry Judy? Yeah. Oh, that's lost two. Yeah, no, they did lose yards. Lost two. I'm pretty sure that was a negative play. I think it was a wash. I don't think it was. Any game I don't know if he got back to the line of scrimmage. I, I thought he was going to have some room to run there. I, it, it looked like he had some Why room to run. Why is it that whenever, when other teams do that, it works? That's my point. What are we that, doing that's, wrong? That's what I'm saying. Is it the personnel? Is it... We, well, uh, Jerry Judy's not Xavier Worthy. Because uh, I can see it coming, like, before the first handoff uh, is made, and, and you're just going, oh, this is man. just not going to hey, go well. Here's the problem, man. When you look at the Cleveland Browns, uh, in the words of Jason Lloyd, speed is not our thing. Um <laughs> It is not. That's not our forte. No. They, I mean, guys on our team run like an 86. But you know what? It shouldn't be. We don't play <laughs> eight games or nine games a year in Miami. Uh, you know, see, if you're if you're if you know you're going to play nine games a year in, in yeah. that kind of weather, okay, build your team that way. Why do the Yankees always have short porch home run hitters? Because yeah. that's the way their stadium is. But built. the Chiefs had Tyree Kill and Xavier Worthy. They play in cold weather. I mean, yeah, you I, shut I, down I like one way. guy. Like like you'd like one. Yeah, yeah, right. Just give me yeah. one. But but overall, like it's for years, the Big Ten had three hundred and fifty pound, three hundred thirty pound offensive linemen and running backs that, that were. I get it. I get it. Because you're playing your games. Sure. In but you, like Jay said, you want to have one guy that's. Super I would speedy. like to yes. have one guy. You don't have to have. A, I understand why you don't have a team who full, knows how and, to you know, catch and, and run. run. <laughs> right. Right. We we got we got possession receivers with no hands. I'm like, how do you, how do you run an 86 and then your hands is a 55? You got to at least be catching the rock, bro. Like this is crazy. You are he after all a receiver, IR, right? You, that's, What's that? Oh no, is he really headed to the IR? Yeah, Who? David Bell. David, David Bell. Bell. He was hip. Yeah, he hurt. Dislocated hip. hip. Dislocated hip. Yeah. I said, when he when he came down and I see, I was, look, we even cared about that. We would have. We would all been happy if he got cut, and now we cared because he had a good game. Yeah. We cared he got the. Uh, oh, well, I don't other, see other injury news, real hurt. quick. Yeah. Ogbo cleared concussion protocol. He'll be oh, fine. Uh, Pierre Strong week to week with a hamstring, and Njoku not ruled out for Sunday. All right, he is a 